What is it? Well, it's an endovascular microbial infection of cardiovascular structures. This means it can involve the valves, but also ventricular and atrial endocardium, as well as large vessels and especially prosthetic material. It means the prosthetic heart valves and the polymer associated structures, so the line. When do you suspect endocarditis? Well, first, Look at signs and symptoms of infection. So fever, of course, but also night sweats. You could also have signs of complications as the example we showed you, or heart failure or the appearance of a new murmur in the context of fever. Consider that there are predisposing factors to endocarditis. This could be mechanical factor like congenital heart disease, catheters or trauma, toxic factors, for instance, in drug abusers, and immunologic factors. And of course, if you have a blood culture which is positive for the typical agents of infection of the heart, and I'm talking about Staphylococcus aureus, or Epidermidis, or Streptococcus bovis, or Enterococcus, the suspicion gets higher. ECHO can help you. When you find a positive echo for infective endocarditis, the diagnosis is really almost done. What can you find? Well, vegetation, abscess, as we showed you, or new partial dissertations of prosthetic valve. So in which lesions do you have a higher probability of developing an endocarditis? Well, apart from prosthetic valves, it's stenotic lesions, bicuspid valves, or a mitral valve prolapse. So for you to remember every kind of lesion where you have high velocity jets. But to make the diagnosis, and this is also what the guidelines say, remember, combine all the factors that you have. So ECO findings together with blood cultures and clinics. It de depending on these factors, you can define the diagnosis as definitive, or probable and possible. But remember, the most important thing is, even when you do not find endocarditis, follow your patient up, because then you could discover it later.